In this video, we're going to take a look of, uh, at a quantitative way to determine whether a chemical system is going to be spontaneous or not. So let's start out with a couple of pieces of information here. First off, a chemical reaction is going to be spontaneous if it results in the system moving from a less stable to a more stable state. And to do that, uh, generally decreases in enthalpy are spontaneous and increases in entropy are spontaneous. So both of those together are going to move a system towards that greater stability. We can do a mathematical calculation of this and the combination of taking both the enthalpy and the entropy together along with the temperature of the system is something called the Gibbs free energy. So let's see how that's defined here. Now, Gibbs free energy is defined as, well, we call it the standard free energy change, or delta G naught, is equal to the enthalpy change minus the temperature times the entropy change. So where the, the delta H is the enthalpy change, that's usually given in kilojoules per mole. Uh, entropy changes are given in joules per Kelvin per mole. And the temperature must be in Kelvin. So if you notice here, we've got kilojoules and we've got joules. So we need to make sure we account for those unit changes in our calculation. Now, when we do this calculation, a chemical reaction is spontaneous if it results in a negative delta G value. So if delta G naught is negative, it means that it is spontaneous. So that is the value that we are looking for here. Now you could take, you could kind of look and um, see what different possible changes there are or combinations there are for the, that free energy change. And you can actually make some generalizations here. So for example, a delta G value is always going to be spontaneous if a delta H value is negative and the delta H, delta S value is positive. Now it's always going to give you a negative delta G value. On the flip side, it is never spontaneous. So you're going to get a positive delta G value when delta H is positive and delta S is negative. Um, so just mathematically, that's how it works. When you have temperature changes, this can differ depending on what the temperature change is. So it's spontaneous at high temperatures um, given these conditions here. So if the temperature is large, um, then if delta H is positive and delta, delta S is positive, you'll get a spontaneous change. But if the temperature change is small, it'll give you a positive or non-spontaneous value. And then you can get the flip at uh, lower temperatures here. So pause the video here, just kind of study this diagram because these generalizations can help you quickly sort of identify the type of delta G value you would expect in a calculation. So let's move on and take a look at a quick calculation here. We've got a chemical reaction that's exothermic with a enthalpy change of negative 400 kilojoules per mole. We have an entropy change of plus 44 joules per mole per Kelvin. And we want to calculate delta G at 25 degrees Celsius. And then answer the question, is this spontaneous? So we're going to do delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. And we're going to, whoa, I don't know why I have an equals in there. Ignore that. Alrighty. Uh, we're going to enter in our values. So delta H is in kilojoules here. So we're going to leave it in kilojoules. And we're going to subtract. Now the temperature needs to be in Kelvin. So we add 273 to this to get 298. And then our entropy change is 44, but it's in joules per mole per Kelvin. So we're going to need to divide that value by 1,000 to get it in kilojoules as well. Okay, really important, this step. Don't forget that. Um, if we do this calculation, and I'm just going to put in the final value here, I get negative 413 kilojoules per mole. So delta G has a negative value 
which means that it is spontaneous. Okay, so that's how we define what spontaneity is in a chemical reaction, as well as how to use Gibbs free energy to calculate a value to go along with that and then determine whether a chemical system is spontaneous or not. That's it for this video then. We'll see you in the next one.